some positive news about COVID-19. The West sanctions China, and China sanctions back. Plus, President Biden gives his first press conference. Then more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark Alert. It helps detect if your private information has been leaked online or is part of a data breach. We start today with some uplifting news about COVID-19. And yes, there actually is good news to report. You might not know it because a study found the media had a bias for only presenting negative news about the pandemic. And major U.S. media were the worst offenders. The coverage by U.S. publications with a national audience has been much more negative than coverage by any other source that the researchers analyzed, including scientific journals, major international publications, and regional U.S. media. After a rigorous follow-up study, we concluded, no duh, but don't worry, because a sweet, glazed-over, occasionally crusty savior is here to put an end to the coronavirus once and for all. Of course, I'm talking about Krispy Kreme donuts. Krispy Kreme announced it will give you a free donut every day for the remainder of 2021 as long as you've been vaccinated. In a statement, Chief Marketing Officer David Skenna said, we all want to get COVID-19 behind us as fast as possible, and we want to support everyone doing their part to make the country safe by getting vaccinated as soon as the vaccine is available to them. And to be clear, this isn't just a one-time deal. You can get a free Krispy Kreme donut every single day until December 31st this year. So once you get your vaccine injections before long, you'll need to start getting insulin injections. Diabetes is one of the leading causes of death in America, so maybe the healthier option is to just get the coronavirus. Another way to shave down those COVID numbers might be by Shaving down your face. Experts warn that having a beard may increase your chance of contracting and spreading COVID-19. Qingyan Chen, a professor of mechanical engineering at Purdue University in Indiana said, a beard is very likely to create a small gap between facial skin and mask unless one fastens the mask tightly. The small gap would create a leakage for air to enter the nose when inhaling. Besides this, other risks of having a beard include suddenly becoming way hotter and getting too many dates. Calm down, ladies. Only so much of this to go around. Speaking of good news, COVID cases across the country are dropping. So much so that many nursing homes are now allowing indoor visitors. Dr. Lee Flesher, a senior medical officer for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, said, now that millions of vaccines have been administered to nursing home residents and staff, and the number of COVID cases in nursing homes has dropped significantly, CMS is updating its visitation guidance to bring more families together safely. Long-term care residents accounted for more than 130,000 deaths, so it's wonderful to see these facilities ease restrictions enough for family members to visit. I can't wait for them to ease restrictions enough for me to resume cruising for sugar grannies. Old ladies take one look at this beard and start dropping coin in our Patreon account once I show them how to use the Wi-Fi. More after the break. Welcome back. Former Trump lawyer Sidney Powell moved to dismiss a lawsuit by Dominion Voting Systems. Dominion is suing her for $1.3 billion in damages over her claims they rigged voting machines against Donald Trump. Her argument for tossing the case? According to her lawyer, it's because no reasonable person would believe her claims. In the filing, Powell's lawyers wrote, those members of the public who were interested in the controversy were free to, and did, review that evidence and reach their own conclusions, or awaited resolution of the matter by the courts before making up their minds. So her defense is that reasonable people would not believe her? The problem is, the public isn't reasonable. 
It's 2021, and we have people that believe the Earth is flat. The moon landing was faked. And Adam Sandler deserves $20 million per movie. Never again, Sandman. Never again. Powell's defense is similar to one Tucker Carlson used successfully in a slander case last year, that no reasonable viewer takes him seriously. Will Sidney Powell's defense work? Maybe. Because no reasonable person should have believed her lawsuit, especially if they read it. It was full of typos and sloppy writing. How did she turn in a legal brief with so many errors? What kind of idiot paralegal did she hire to proofread it? Adam Sandler? I said never again. This all just goes to show that people will believe anything. Some believe the 2016 election was stolen by Russians. Others believe the 2020 election was stolen by Democrats. I can't wait until 2024 when people believe the election was stolen by the Hamburger. But you won't have to wait until 2024 for Trump to return. According to a spokesman for Donald Trump, the former president will be launching his own social media platform in a few months. According to a poll, most Republicans are likely to use it. No other details have been given, but I imagine it'll be called Trumper. And it'll be a lot like Twitter. Except you automatically like your own posts. Jason Miller, a longtime advisor and spokesperson for Trump, said, This new platform is going to be big. Everyone wants him, and he's going to bring millions and millions, tens of millions, to this platform. This probably makes Mike Pence pretty nervous, since the last time right-wingers quickly built a platform, it was to hang him. Speaking of being nervous, our next story is an update to the ongoing story of the U.S.-China relationship. It's like a classic sitcom, will they, won't they situation. But instead of tuning in to see if they wind up together, we're constantly checking to see if a war is going to break out. The U.S. and its allies announced sanctions against Chinese officials for human rights abuses against Uyghur Muslims. A joint statement released from the U.S., U.K., Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and the EU read, China's extensive program of repression includes severe restrictions on religious freedoms, the use of forced labor, mass detention in internment camps, forced sterilizations, and the concerted destruction of Uyghur heritage. Of course, I've been documenting these human rights abuses for years now. I mean, from two years ago. See? I told you beards make you hotter. But hey, whether it's wishing someone a happy belated birthday, or sanctions for genocide, better late than never, I guess. China responded to the sanctions in a mature way, saying, I am rubber, and you're glue. If you sanction me, I'll sanction you. That wasn't the exact quote, but you get the idea. China retaliated by denying all claims of abuse and announced sanctions on EU entities and personnel, as well as the UK. And the US could be next in line for sanctions from China. Oh no, what will we do if an authoritarian country with polluted cities and a currency no one wants decides to put sanctions on America. We might have to bring manufacturing back, creating thousands of new jobs with good wages, lifting American families out of poverty while reducing the trade deficit. We'd have to start wearing Nikes not made by Uyghur slave labor. And we could no longer enjoy new Hollywood movies that self-censor and even change their plot lines to get into the China market. Man. Chinese sanctions would force us to live in a veritable utopia of economic prosperity, with less hypocrisy from our storytellers and our athletes. Even the very way we obtain information might become more trustworthy, since Google would no longer be helping the Chinese military. Gosh, if China sanctions us, it's, it's going to be rough. We'll be right back as soon as I'm done trembling. Welcome back. This week, the first photos emerged from the Biden-era migrant detention facilities. The Biden administration has refused to call the surge of illegal immigrants to the U.S. a crisis. But as you can see from these photos of overcrowded facilities, it's not not a crisis. Eleven former Border Patrol officials wrote to Congress asking for help, saying, 
On behalf of retired chiefs of the United States Border Patrol, we write with grave concern regarding the current crisis on the southwest border. It is time to address our broken immigration system, as well as the push and pull factors encouraging mass migration and its impacts on border security. Biden finally realized he can no longer stay silent on the subject. This isn't something he can make go away by ignoring it, like his son's Ukraine deal, or his son's China deal, or that sexual misconduct allegation. So on Wednesday, the press was granted access to one of these detention facilities for the first time. Just uh, not one of the facilities that's been under fire for overcrowded conditions. That's like being accused of arson and trying to prove your innocence by showing off one of the houses you didn't burn down. Biden has responded to claims that he's made the not crisis worse. How? By blaming Trump, of course. Biden said, this new surge we are dealing with now started with the last administration, but it's our responsibility to deal with it humanely. Yeah, this seems pretty humane. See, it's not kids in cages, it's teens in Chipotle wrappers. That's way better. On Wednesday, Biden placed Vice President Kamala Harris in charge of dealing with the not crisis. Nope, nothing to see here. Biden said, I asked her, the VP, today because she's the most qualified person to do it, to lead our efforts with Mexico and the Northern Triangle, and the countries that can help, need help in stemming the movement of so many folks, stemming the migration to our southern border. Kamala Harris added, these children shouldn't be in detention facilities. They should be in prison. She didn't actually say that, she only thought it. She misses being an attorney general. Biden spoke about the for the last time, it's not a border crisis. Come on, man, stop calling it that. On Thursday, at his first press conference, Biden had faced criticism from conservatives who were waiting so long to give his first formal press appearance. To be fair, after the way the press treated Trump for four years, I'd want to avoid press conferences too. Biden promised transparency at the border, once his plan was up and running. I will commit to transparency. And as soon as I am in a position to be able to implement what we're doing right now, and one of the reasons I haven't gone down, I have all my, my chief folks have gone down, is I don't want to become the issue. I don't want to be, you know, bringing all the Secret Service and everybody with me to get in the way. So this is being set up, and you'll have full access to everything once we get this thing moving. So the press can see it after he fixes it. That's like saying, sure, officer, you can check my basement just as soon as I dispose of the bodies. Biden also doubled down on saying the surge of illegal immigrants is not his fault because it happens every year. Wait, so he's implying that even though it's getting worse, it's just part of a natural cycle, and there's no evidence he's responsible for it. What does he think this is? Climate change? Biden also announced a new goal of having 200 million vaccine shots in arms by his 100th day in office, saying, I know it's ambitious, twice our original goal, but no other country in the world has even come close, not even close, to what we are doing. I believe we can do it. Well, that's no surprise. If there's one thing Americans are great at, it's getting shot up. Even more shots will be fired in Afghanistan as Biden announced it's unlikely he'd withdraw troops from the region by the May 1st deadline set by Trump. He said he doesn't plan on staying there long, though, but it's hard to believe him when that's the same thing we were told by Trump, and Obama, and Bush. I guess part of being president is presenting us with hope for Afghanistan, then snatching it away, like Lucy, with a nuclear football. But hey, Maybe Biden can get us out of Afghanistan by 2028, if he wins re-election in 2024. That's right, Biden announced he plans on running for re-election. Trump also hinted at running in 2024, which means we can look forward to Trump versus Biden too. It'll be the most unnecessary sequel to a story involving ancient relics since Passion of the Christ 2. The only difference is Biden versus Trump too will actually cause people to lose their faith. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark Alert. Big data breaches happen all the time. 
like the 2019 Capital One breach that affected 100 million Americans, or the 2017 Equifax hack that exposed data of nearly 150 million Americans. And when this happens, your private information can be exposed, like your credit card number, bank account balance, social security number, and more. If you're concerned about data breaches, identity theft, password leaks, or hackers, you should use Surfshark Alert. Surfshark Alert will notify you if your data is compromised. This way you can change your passwords, close exposed accounts, or switch to new companies. And for a limited time, you can save 75%. You can get Surfshark Alert for only $3.19 per month, plus get three months for free. Plus, get a free subscription to Surfshark VPN. To get this deal, go to surfshark.deals slash uncovered alert and use the code uncovered alert. Take control of your online security. Monitor your credit cards, guard your email passwords, and go to surfshark.deals slash uncovered alert to learn more. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.